Sad Water. down to business here fellas okay. I love the bathroom to me the bathroom is the best of all rooms name another room you run to the den <laughs> all right this ain't jeopardy you jackasses <laughs> let the man continue he got me on that though uh, the bathroom is my favorite spot definitely yeah uh, but not just uh, any bathroom I don't like other people's bathrooms I like mine know what I'm saying there's a TV in there I'd never come out I'd move in. It'd be my own little utopia, my Xanapu. <laughs> Everything I need, right at hand. I eat in there. I'll sit down with a bowl of Raisin Bran and just marvel at the digestive oh, yeah. system in action. Oh, like you fellas don't, please. <laughs> Some of you guys are probably making on yourselves right now. <laughs> the other day, my wife asked me, she said, why are you in there so long? And I told her, because you're out there. Yeah. <laughs> And she does not dare come in. Nope. Because our bodies give off a natural repellent. Everyone steers clear when you're on the pot. It's like a force field leaped out of your ass. We're safe in the bathroom. It's our fortress of solitude. Yes. And uh, by the way, a bathroom should look like a bathroom. When women try to turn these bathrooms into a dollhouse, it's a disaster. <laughs> got the potpourri, the candles, the decorative soaps. How about the decorative towels? This drives me nuts. Towels I'm not allowed to use. On the towel rack, in the spot where the usable towels should be. I'm drying my hands on the sports section because every towel on the rack is off limits. I especially hate it when they decorate the toilet. My grandma's got the shag carpet tank cover. Really, I swear to God, it's like trying to take a crap into one of those cat condos. And the padded seats. These are no picnics. Putting a man on a padded seat is like putting Evil Knievel on a moped. It ain't natural. I need a firm surface to work off of. And uh, I don't know what's going on with those crescent-shaped carpets my wife puts around the base of the toilet, but that is not a good idea. My morning whiz comes out like wiper fluid. Two different directions. I'm all over the place. You know what I'm saying, huh? You're now and <laughs> urine. <laughs> That cute little carpet she's warming her feet on is sopping up the most of it. Yeah. Same here. I, I'm like uh, one of them lawn genies. Uh, nothing is safe. Plants turning brown, magazines looking like accordions. The dog is... Well, actually, I think the dog kind of digs it, actually. But the, the point is, the bathroom ain't pretty. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. before, I spent a great deal of time in the bathroom, and not just at home. Recently, I spent several hours in the men's room of a local mall. Trying to get a George Michael autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. I was working, because men are a lot more willing to chat when they can't move because their pants are down. So, join me now, huddled with a hidden camera in a men's room stall, for these revealing bathroom interviews. Pretty good. 
What'd you have for lunch? I had lunch. May, may I not recommend a rotisserie chicken? Yeah. That's what I got going right now. <laughs> How's it going? Think you can guess my name? Not really. I'll give you five guesses. John. John? No, that's uh, that's one. Josh. Josh? No, it's not Josh. Bill. No, nope, not Bill. Not Bill. That's three. You got two left. Sorry, what was that? James. James is absolutely right. I'm positive. People call me Jimmy, but my name is James. That is, that's astounding that you would guess that. And to congratulate you, please enjoy this plate of brownies. You like, like them? There you go. You've got a gift, my friend. Go for it and share it with the world. I love it. Yeah. 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 When you're uh, when you're crapping next to a guy, it's real nice. There are no racial barriers, there are no colors, just two equal pairs of feet. You're really making a difference, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Juggy Dance Squad, why don't you jug it up? Yeah. yeah. Our leaders can't be trusted. This democracy nonsense has gotten out of hand. A government run by the people. Please, the people are the ones who watched The Nanny for the last six years. <laughs> I've often said, if a guy like Adam was in charge, things would be better. Oh, no, wait, that's Adam that always says that if he was in charge, they'd be better. But uh, regardless, if Adam ran things, if Adam were king, the world would be a very different place. And now, bow down before him and welcome his royal highness, the king! Silence! Silence, name! Silence! First order of business when I am king, I will force paroled sex offenders to wear rainbow wigs and swim fins. That way they'll be easy to identify and even easier to run down. When I am king, I will eliminate male nurses. The only thing a man should nurse is a bottle of scotch. Plus, at least half of those male nurses are mercy killers. Also, any female nurse older than 40 years of age will be replaced by a young, nubile candy striper. You're already sick. The last thing you need is a sponge bath from a broad that looks like Tommy Lasorda. <laughs> Furthermore, silence! I will install coin slots on life support systems. You will live as long as your family can keep making change. <laughs> silence! The king is parched and grows weary. Jester, bring forth the chalice of ale. Scamper away, and next time make it a large. Silence! Silence! When I am king, 
all bottled water will be stocked with trout. I will have all unwanted children shipped to an island and raised by Bill Cosby and Felicia Rashad. When I am king, I will change the spelling of the word team to T-E-I-M. So that finally there would be an I in team. Silence! Silence, I say! When I am king, I will instruct the royal chemist to invent the shaving cream that smells like women's underwear. The king feels hunger. Court gesture, bring forth a shank of animal. Silence! When I am king, I will drastically reduce air pollution. All of my subjects will trade in their cars for ethanol-powered golf carts. I, however, will tool around town in a custom 74 L Camino with Ram induction, a 429 Hemi Big Block, twin 650 Holly double bumper, silent, velocity stacks, open headers, and a no fat chicks license plate frame. <laughs> When I am king, I will eliminate swift water rescues. Anyone hanging out by the mouth of the river during a torrential downpour deserves to drown. This is just God taking out the garbage. Silence! When I am king, I will revise the sexual basis system so that getting to first base will include oral sex and sodomy. named after me. Then I will rent porn and pleasure myself to people doing it Adam style. The king has spoken. All hail the king. You're gonna get a hernia. Dance, little friend. Dance. You know, once in a great while, a man comes along who changes the way we look at the world. Jesus, Muhammad, and now, gentlemen, let's take a look at somebody even better than them. He happens to be our very own announcer, and his name is The Fox. Fox. 
Legends are not born, they are made. Excellence cannot be quantified. At just five foot seven inches tall, William Wallace Foster towers over no man. And yet, he towers over them all. They call him the Fox. He has been called the fastest beer drinker in the world. But he is more than that, much more. He also sings filthy songs. Why do a girl as ugly as a duck? He was born in the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, and perhaps inspired by the gas-guzzling automobiles of the time, he began to drink, and drink fast. In the late 1950s, his gift for gulp and unsanitary song led him to Hollywood. He was an instant hit. And she hear the captain shouting, Dine, I'll blow my horn. Word spread quickly about the man with the magic mouth. It was in Las Vegas, Nevada, that a young Jimmy Kimmel got his first look at the legend. I was a junior in high school, and my friend Tommy told me about this guy who sang these filthy songs and could drink beer as fast as you could dump it on the ground. Now, Tommy and I were way underage. We had no fake IDs, so we snuck into this bar around 1 in the afternoon when they weren't checking, and we stowed away in the bathroom until around 10 o'clock that night. And when the fox finally did show up, he drank, man, and he drank and drank and sang dirty songs, and he stood on his head and drank. And later that night, as I was vomiting up the complimentary hot dogs they'd been passing around, I thought... This must be the greatest man that ever lived. Tongues out! But the rigors of the road, combined with upwards of 35 beers a night, took its toll on the fox. In 1961, he settled in the quiet city of Santa Monica. It wasn't quiet for long. I don't know since we called. And I don't know. She left footprints on my wall. The Fox Inn was born. In 1989, the California State Department of Health closed the Fox Inn. But the spirit of the man, his unflagging vitality, his inexhaustible zest for life, your mother's health cool in Jonestown, make Bill the Fox Foster. A living legend. What a stirring portrayal. Fox, it's too bad your liver couldn't be with us tonight to enjoy this moment. To the Fox's liver, everyone! Take it away! Oh! Jumped on the saddle, the saddle wasn't there. Drove nine inches up the old gray mare. From the time I pecked her to a tree, to a tree, to the time I pecked her to a tree. It's so long to be in the saddle since my horse died. <laughs> my body has tuberculosis. My body has only one lung. My body comes up from oysters. Uh, let's check back in uh, in the bathroom, shall we? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and so we meet again. How's it going in there? Pretty good. Well, I tell you one thing. I am Harry. I am like a chimpanzee. This is not a pretty sight in here. All right, that is all we have left to give. Thank you, Juggies. Great job tonight. And Fox, a Ziggy Socky to close it out. Ziggy Socky, Ziggy Socky, hoy, hoy, hoy.
Is a Stone Stanley production in association with. Yeehaw!